Welcome back to the Mill Creek Government Channel. I'm Jessica James Stutzman. We have a very special show prepared for you today and just in time for those New Year's resolutions we're all going to make in January on leading a healthier lifestyle. Today we will be learning how to better nourish our bodies with nutritional wholesome foods as well as uncovering the meanings behind those complicated food labels on our grocery store purchases. Joining us today to help us rediscover how important it is to take good care of our health is the Safe and Healthy Communities Coordinator for Erie County Health Department, Laura Luther. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So when looking at eating healthier, how important is it to understand um, what is recommended? It's incredibly important because that's really the starting point to eating healthier. If you look at those recommendations, it will tell you, you know, what should I be eating? How much should I be eating? It's really the first step towards getting healthy. It is, and I think there's so many things out in the community or commercials we watch or fad diets that yes. are you know popular. I think they get I think they confuse us. Absolutely. It's an overwhelming amount of information on nutrition. So being able to use those resources is really beneficial because they provide so much. Mm -hmm. And where are those resources? Where can I find those recommendations? Well, the US Department of Agriculture provides recommendations and guidelines for nutrition. They have their website www.choosemyplate.gov. That's a great first start. They have tons of resources for children, for adults. It's just a myriad of information. I'm going to have to go to that website. I haven't looked at the food pyramid chart in a while and I'm sure it's changed in the last 10 years when I studied, um, you know, health or, you know, yeah. nutrition. So can you fill us in on some of those so those things that have changed, those details that we should be paying attention to. Absolutely, well it's definitely changed uh, since the food pyramid. They actually don't have the food pyramid anymore. Mm -hmm. It is my plate. So when you're looking at your plate, you should have half of your plate be fruits and vegetables and it should be a nice variety of colors and different fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. You should have a protein on your plate and it should be a lean meat. You should strive for lean meat. Uh, poultry like your chicken or turkey. Fish is another good lean meat as well, you should try to limit your red, red meats because they're high in saturated fat. So mm -hmm. that can lead to high blood pressure, high cholesterol, some of those bad things. And you should have a grain on your plate as well. And you should try to make half of your grain whole grains. Okay. In addition, you should try and have a dairy component as well and make that a low fat dairy component because dairy is usually really high in fat. I didn't, I didn't even know that. And unfortunately, I love cheese and I love milk. <laughs> Me too. I love cheese. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so when you mentioned you should try to make um, half of your grains whole, whole grains, what does that mean? So when you're looking at whole grains, a lot of people don't realize that unless it is a whole grain, a lot of that nutritional value is stripped away. So when you're looking at wheat bread or white bread and you turn it around to look at the food label, it usually says enriched wheat flour or enriched white flour or it's a refined grain. What they're saying is that they've stripped away all of the nutrients to make it easier to produce and easier to mass produce and then on the back end they add those nutrients back in and oftentimes they miss a ton of the nutrients that were there in the start. Mm -hmm. I think you mentioned it right there and I want to point out to everybody you mentioned grab your you know your bread or whatever you're, you're going to purchase and turn it around and look at the food label. Absolutely that's one of the best things that you can start to do. Um, and I, I guess when I first started eating healthier, and like I said, I'm so glad to have you here because this is going to be a learning curve for me too. <laughs> I think I eat healthy. Sometimes I fall off the wagon here. Um, but I, I didn't always, I guess I didn't always know that wheat bread isn't healthier if it isn't whole grain. Absolutely. So wheat bread definitely is one of the biggest things I think people don't realize that if it doesn't say whole grain in that ingredient list, it really isn't as healthy as you think it is. Mm -hmm. And this is really overwhelming. Um, you know, should people um, try and do every, try and do this cold turkey and just cut out all this bad stuff out and then switch to a healthy lifestyle? You know, like a New Year's resolution right. kind of style thing. <laughs> or should we, you know, slowly make changes? Like I have a bad habit of getting my sugared up coffees and cappuccinos. <laughs> you know, what's the best way if we're going to jump into this? Take it piece by piece, or just you know, cold turkey? Well, I think it definitely depends on you as a person and what works best for you. Some people really feel that just cutting it all out at once is the 
best way for them to do it. But I personally feel that small steps is the best way to changing your health, especially if it's a long-term lifestyle change. If you're trying to eliminate something or restrict something completely, it starts to get so overwhelming that oftentimes you're not as successful as you hoped to be. And what do you think about um, as far as everyone always says breakfast is the healthiest meal of the day. Do you think that's true? Oh, it's it's so important. If you're not eating breakfast, you're not jump-starting your metabolism. Mm -hmm. So having that either piece of toast or a piece of fruit is a great easy grab to do for breakfast. That is what's really going to fuel your body for the rest of the day. Jump-start that metabolism to start burning that fat off. Mm -hmm. If you're not eating until 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, because yeah. the day gets the best of you, yeah. your, body, your body will actually read that as something's wrong, she can't access food, so I'm going to slow down and I'm going to start storing fat. Right. So in turn, you're actually doing more damage than you are good. Right. And so, you know, I, I think it's a good point to make, you know, even if you're not hungry in the morning, grab something small, a couple hard-boiled eggs mm -hmm. or, you know, I like to start my day off actually with a cup of water. It kind of like, yes. you know, wakes me up. A lot of people go first thing for that coffee, but I heard that it's really good to go for like an eight ounce glass of water. Oh, water is the best thing that you can choose. Obviously, it doesn't have that caffeine in there that you're looking for, but you should be drinking as much water as possible, especially if you give your body time to filter that water through. It will start to feel like that cup of coffee in the morning mm -hmm. and you will be craving it. And you should be striving to have at least eight glasses of water a day. So what's the best way? Start in the morning. Exactly. Eight glasses of water in a day. Everybody <laughs> should remember that. And I want to let everybody in on a little secret here in the studio. Studio, our little mugs are filled with water, water. to keep us rehydrated. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you might have thought it was coffee all along, <laughs> but it's been water this whole time. So um, what are some other great beginner steps to get our viewers started? Because I know this is really hard and, um, you know, this show is going to start airing, pro airing in probably the middle of the winter. So, you know, right as we're hitting that, you know, it's really cold. We want to hibernate. What's some <laughs> good tips to get us started for this winter? Well, as I mentioned with your whole grains, one of the best places you can start is looking at your food label. When you're buying something and it's not a fruit or a vegetable and you do have a food label on the back of it, turn it over and look at it and see what's really in that in that product that you're eating. Uh, serving sizes is one of the biggest things that you can identify. If it is a bottle of soda and you happen to be splurging, yeah. is it two and a half serving sizes? Because if it is, that sugar content is now two and a half times more than what you thought. So incredibly important and a really great first step. Mm -hmm. So turning it around, looking at the at the back of the food label, and what about what if you don't understand what you know? Sometimes there's really big words on the back of the food label. You know, should we look those up? Should you avoid those altogether? What do you think you should do with those? Well, one of my rules of thumb is that if I can't pronounce it, especially if it's an ingredient, I'm not going to eat it. So mm -hmm. if I don't know what it is, odds are it's probably not as good for me as it is. I think it is. So that's a really good rule of thumb. If you're really not sure and you're interested or you want to eat it still, then definitely do a little more digging and find out what it is. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I, I again, I think that's a really good point to make. You know, we research so many things we purchased today. We research houses, cars, colleges. We need to research our food. Point. Absolutely, it's a great point, and that's a great first place to start. You know, if that's something that is going in our bodies and it's what's nourishing us, then we should really know what it is that we're eating. So let's go back to portion sizes because when I was learning to uh, eat healthy again, and you have to reteach yourself this sort of <laughs> yes. thing over and over and over. Um, when it comes to portion sizes, I mean, th sometimes you can just get all messed up. You think, you know, you think you're eating really well and I'm eating spinach, but my portion of spinach is massive. <laughs> so why don't you tell us, what are good rules of thumb for portion sizes? Well, one of the easiest rules of thumb before you even start looking at how much you're eating is when you're looking at portion sizes, it should be about the size of your fist. Mm -hmm. That's a great first start. And you know, some of us, that doesn't seem like a lot, but really it's how much we should be eating. But when you're looking at portion sizes, again, you can start to compare them to some of our common household items, your vegetables and fruits, uh, medium size, about the size of a light bulb. So mm -hmm. your broccoli should be about the size of a light bulb. Mm -hmm. uh, your pancakes, if you're going to splurge for breakfast, actually should be about the size of a CD case. So mm -hmm. it's pretty eye-opening and that's oftentimes where people get caught is eating too much because they're eating too much of a portion and then it ends up adding to our excess weight. Right, right. And do you think, how do you, 
And I think everyone thinks, well, if I start cutting my portions, if I only eat, you know, a CD size case, or if I only eat, you know, the size of my fist for, you know, my protein, um, I'm going to be starving. Yeah, well, and the funny thing is that it's a lot of times changing that mentality and that mindset and how you approach that. Definitely you should be eating your breakfast so that you're not starving by the time you get to lunch. You should be eating your lunch at a decent hour because we often, you know, snack in between and eat junk food and, and then overeat by the time we get to dinner. So if you're fueling yourself throughout the day, that's going to make a significant difference. And having those healthy snacks throughout in between will really help you to kind of hold off on that hunger feeling. Mm -hmm. And what does, uh, what are the recommendations now to eat three, you know, large meals, to eat maybe five smaller meals a day? What's the best thing for people to do? Well, again, I think it depends on the person, but what is recommended right now is actually to eat smaller portions, more smaller portions throughout the day so that you aren't overeating at night or for lunch, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. And so remember, if you are going to be snacking, make sure you're snacking on, you know, fruits, yeah. Yes. vegetables, um, nuts maybe are nuts. a really good one. Exactly, hummus. Um, some of yeah. those um, prepackaged snacks can uh, can fool you. Uh, they say they're natural, or they you know um, say they're healthy for you, but yeah. that's more or less just advertising. Absolutely, and oftentimes they're processed or packed with preservatives and mm -hmm. aren't as healthy as they look. Oh, of course. Can we? play with some of the props you brought over yeah. here as far as portions go. I don't want to, I don't want to miss this at all. Um, <laughs> let's grab some of these and we well, can show our viewers. <laughs> this one I think is probably the saddest oh. one for people to see. So this is actually your serving size of one cookie and it's compared to the size of a yo-yo. So oh. for most people, this probably isn't the case. I know for myself, I have to kind of check and see, but yeah, those giant cookies, those are, yeah, you know, 12 of those. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a few days portion sizes of cookies. And of course, you know, that's not recommended to have a cookie every day, but right. if you're going to have something, you should know how much you should really have before it starts to really impact mm -hmm. you. Uh, pasta is another big surprise for people. This is a mouse, if anyone's still familiar, before we went wireless, <laughs> this is a mouse full of pasta. So this is your recommended amount of pasta or green. Yeah, I have to say as somebody who comes from an Italian family that <laughs> not going to work. Look like my portion <laughs> no, size not of pasta. at all. Not at all. <laughs> the other sad one and we said we love cheese. This is actually one serving of cheese. So this is compared to two Domino's. This is one serving of cheese or pretty much like your mozzarella stick. If you're going to get string cheese, uh -huh. it would be about this size. So. Okay, so I get two dominoes though. I don't, <laughs> not just one, I get two. You get two okay. dominoes right. to hold you through. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Your red meat, this one I think has been used for a quite a long time. Your red meat should be about the size of a deck of cards. And like I said before, it should be no more than three times a week because our red meats are full of saturated fat. Oh, I really like that, that, what you just said. Can you say that one more time? It should only be eaten three times a week? Yes. And then the other times it should be fill, filled with lean meats. Yes. And again, lean meats are your chicken, fish. Yep. Chicken, fish, uh, turkey is another great lean mm -hmm. meat. Actually, venison, deer meat's a really good oh, yeah. lean meat too. So you don't have to be limited to just chicken or mm -hmm. just turkey. You can really play around. And fish, there's so many different types of fish out there right. that you can enjoy if you like fish. Oh, absolutely. Okay, great. What's next? Well, as we're talking about fish, fish, this is the amount here. Again, Again, this is a little dated, so some of our younger generations don't know that this is a checkbook. <laughs> uh, but a fish should be about the size of a checkbook, or for some of our younger generations, it's actually about the size of an iPhone, too. So okay. you can kind of get a good idea. But again, if you're eating really healthy, you mentioned spinach. Mm -hmm. um, eating a ton of spinach is not going to add a lot of calories to you. So you can still eat a plate full of healthy food. Okay and it's not going to add pounds to your waistline. Right, so right. don't limit yourself on those fruits and on vegetables. The good stuff. On the good stuff, mm -hmm. absolutely. And I will say too, when, I, when we did start eating healthy, um, because we were filling ourselves with nutritional uh, foods and things with nutritional value. I have to say, I actually wasn't hungry because my body was receiving what it was, what it needed, yes, what it was supposed to. Exactly. I didn't have cravings because I was getting sugar from fruits. Yes. So I will say making those substitutions really do work. And I'm glad you mentioned that because a lot of times people, you know, wonder I'm eating a lot, but I still don't have any energy. If mm -hmm. I cut back, but I'm eating healthy, will I still feel that way? But, uh, 
unhealthy foods have a lot of empty calories, meaning that yes. they got tons of calories, so you think you'll have the energy, but they don't have the nutrients behind them. And that's really what we're looking for is nutrient dense food mm -hmm. that has a low calorie content. Beautiful. I think that was worded wonderfully. Thank you. And then what's the last two we or last three I think we've got here? Yeah, so actually we have this little guy here, this one little die is actually your butter. Uh -huh. Your butter, your serving of butter, just one serving, so you might have a couple throughout the day, mm -hmm. but this one little guy is your butter. Okay. This is actually one serving of peanut butter mm -hmm. or mixed nuts. So if you're having your snack throughout the day, have celery and a little bit of peanut butter. Mm -hmm. It's about the size of a golf ball. So a small fistful of, of peanut butter would be good. Beautiful. Yeah, and then we have our fruits and vegetables, which I mentioned. Obviously, we have examples here, but you don't really need to limit yourself. Mm -hmm. They are natural in sugar and, and have a lot of nutrients. So this is one serving size of an orange if okay. you want to see. So that's Beautiful. about, yeah, about a medium sized baseball. A baseball, perfect. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. it looks like a baseball, so it, it yes. makes perfect sense to me. Absolutely, so when I'm teaching kids, it's great because they play with these things all the time. Right. They're always around these different items, so for them to actually make that connection mm -hmm. is really eye-opening for mm -hmm. them. And it is about the size of my fist still, actually. Exactly, you know, the absolutely, absolutely. And this is one serving of broccoli, which which also happens to be a light bulb. You can kind of see here on the end. So mm -hmm. this gives you a good idea of how much broccoli you should be eating in one serving as well. That's wonderful. And I think that is very eye-opening. Um, why do you think our portion sizes have changed so much? Well, it really just goes back to, you know, generations before when the fast food industry was coming out and it was becoming more convenient for people. They were really starting to realize that people wanted more bang for their buck. They wanted more food, but at a low cost. They uh, started to notice that people were more apt to buy a large portion and pay a a cost there than buy two smaller portions and pay two different fees. So people started to get that more bang for their buck but didn't realize that they were adapting to that portion size. Mm -hmm. So as their plate got bigger or their portion size got bigger, they were eating that amount. They mm -hmm. weren't saving it for their significant other or saving it for the next day. Yeah. They were eating what was in front of them. So they started to seize that opportunity and it's really just gotten worse from there. I, I can definitely, I can see that, um, you know, even in the last 10 10 years. I mean, Absolutely. everything is super sized yes. and, yes. you know, the jumbo size. Um, but I will say, do you think it's a good idea if people are going out for a meal, would it be safe to say they should maybe cut their meal in half and automatically yes. box one portion up? Yeah, that's a really great idea. I'm glad you mentioned that. Actually, if you go to a lot of restaurants now and you say, will you please, before you bring it out, bag half of my meal for later, they'll do it right on the spot. Right. So they kind of take that away from you because even if you tell yourself, I'm only gonna eat half of this, yes. when it comes out, I'm only gonna eat half, ah, you're gonna start to eat the whole plate oh, and it's yeah. gonna be gone before oh, yeah. you know it. Especially yeah. when that spaghetti that I cut in half starts to spill <laughs> exactly. onto the other side. I'm like, wait, that's not cheating, it's still on the good Right, half. exactly, it's on yeah. the plate. <laughs> yeah, so do you, um, do you think that um, that the word diet is a good word when it comes to uh, eating healthier or do you think people should make just a lifestyle change? Lifestyle change is the best way to be successful. When you say diet, and it's really easy to throw that out there and, and use that because mm -hmm. it's so common, but a diet really sounds like you're restricting or you're limiting yourself yeah. from something. And if you are looking at this as a lifestyle change, you know that's really what needs to be considered. You almost have to ask yourself, why am I eating healthier? Am I doing it to lose weight? Mm -hmm. Am I doing it to maintain my weight? Am I doing it for a special event like a wedding or a yeah. dance? or something along those lines. If it really is for a lifestyle, if it is for the long term, you know, cutting out pizza for the rest of your life, at least I know for myself, I can't do that. Right, I want right. to have it once in a while. Yeah. So moderation is key. If you tell yourself, you know, this isn't an everyday thing, mm -hmm. this might be once in a blue moon, it's not going to impact you as much as it would if you were eating pizza every single day or yeah. having ice cream after every single meal. Right, right. And, um, what do you think as far as 
sugar goes. Uh, sugar, I think, is a really hot topic in the news right now. And, um, you know, I think we talk about, as far as eating healthy, eliminating fats and eliminating sugars. Do we want to eliminate them completely from our diet or do we still need them? Well, it's still important to have them. They are a great source of energy, especially if they are natural sugars. So your fruits and vegetables already have sugars in them naturally and, and they won't add to your waistline like added sugars will. But that's become the new norm is added sugars high fructose corn syrup is a buzzword right now right so if you're looking at that food label again look and see what is in that that food that you're buying and whatever you're consuming uh, high fructose corn syrup corn syrup all of those mm -hmm. different sugars they get uh, stored differently in your body they right. hold on longer so it, it stores as fat and it really isn't healthy for you right and what is this um, what is this prop you have here on the table with the sugar so this is actually sugar content and it looks at different types of foods and beverages and how much sugar is in them. Oh, wow. Okay, go ahead and name off a few of those. Mm. If we turn it a little bit to the front, can you see, can you still see what's inside? Yeah, I can see here on my end. So the first one is animal crackers. There's seven grams of sugar. So generally speaking, you wanna uh, limit yourself in sugars to about 20, 25 grams a day. Oh wow, let's repeat that one more time. How many sugars a day? 20 to 25 grams of sugars a day. Okay. So you have to consider that with your beverages. That's a significant source of sugar content. And by beverages, you mean my frappuccinos? Absolutely. Frappuccinos. Yes, you okay. might have gotten a few days worth of sugar there. I definitely probably have my <laughs> year's worth in in one week. Yes, so. yes. Those things, those are really, you know, those are our guilty pleasures, but they mm -hmm. hide so many, so many sugars, so many different different uh, ingredients that we don't even think about. Mm -hmm. What else do we have? You don't have to list all of them, but what else do we have here? Well, we're going down the line here and we get a little bit more. This is, let's see, we have pre-sweetened cereal. Oh, okay. A lot of times you think cereal is a healthy option. Yeah, and this says it's just one cup, 15 grams of sugar in just one small cup. So if you fill this cup full of cereal, there's going to be 15 grams of sugar. So you've already hit over half of your goal for the day. Over half of your goal for the day. And I have to tell you, when I eat cereal, I don't, don't, <laughs> no. I don't stop at just the one cup. No. So I have to tell you, that is what I will admit, though, that is one of those things I had to cut cold turkey from my diet because I, I just can't contain myself <laughs> with cereal, so. Absolutely. And what, what about the two on the end? Well, the two on the end that are in red, this is a significant. Ooh, red is <laughs> yes. scary. Yes, red is telling you, please steer clear, slow down, or totally kind of avoid this okay, altogether. Okay, this is probably gonna be something I do. Yes, Hang on. so All right, moderation again, this okay. is where moderation comes in. Fruit punch, 12 ounces. So okay. 12 ounces is your normal glass of, right. of a beverage. Okay. There is 47 <gasps> grams of sugar in just one 12 ounce can or beverage of fruit punch. Oh. 47 grams. Oh my God. And how many are we supposed to have in a day? 20 to 25. So we've already doubled it with just one drink. And oh. you might have three, four glasses yeah. of something. Yeah, if you're at a picnic or. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Very thirsty. Yeah. And what's on the end there? This is a fruit drink here. So that's pretty full. So we have to, we have to watch our fruit punch drinks and our regular um, yes. fruit drink. So instead of, you know, maybe the fruit juice drink, we should just have the fruit instead. Yes, yes. Or another great trick is have a glass of water and cut up some fresh fruit and put it in there. Oh, I love that. Yes, that's a really, really great tool to kind of change it up a little mm -hmm. bit in case you're bored and you know you need yeah. a little flavor. Oh yeah, you can you know add some um, you know cucumbers and strawberries mm -hmm. or you know lemon yeah. and lime. Yes, absolutely. And that would sweeten your drink. Yes. Okay, so you mentioned asking yourself um, you know why why you want to be healthier. Is it for an event or is it a lifestyle change? Um, um, and so once you figured out why, what are some of the biggest benefits you're going to experience doing this? Some of, well, the number one biggest benefit that I think everyone generally uses as a motivator is that, you know, losing weight or mm -hmm. trying to maintain that healthy weight. It's one of the biggest uh, impacts that eating healthy has. But some other things that people don't think about, number one is your prevention of illness and chronic diseases. If you're eating foods that have those nutrients in them, you're giving your body what it needs to stay healthy and fight off disease, fight off illness. So mm -hmm. that's a huge, huge benefit to eating healthy. 
Some other things that people don't think about though is just mental health. You're giving your body that fuel it needs. Some of the nutrients we have actually start to activate those feel good chemicals in our body and keep us mentally well too. Mm -hmm. So our bodies are really just a vessel and we need to keep them healthy and well fueled. Um, we're running out of time here. So I want you to, if you don't mind, just mentioned um, what one tip do you think would be the best to make um, an easier transition for this healthy new lifestyle change? Well, slow down, slow down. We always, you know, we're constantly hungry and we're thinking about our next meal and I'm so excited to eat dinner, but when you eat dinner, are you really slowing down and enjoying it? Are you getting the family together and, and doing what we used to do back in the day where you just enjoy each other's presence and eat a meal and savor every bite? Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful tip. Laura, I wanted to thank you so much for coming in the studio today. I know you've kickstarted me with my, <laughs> I know my New Year's resolution again every year, but folks, slow down to eat. Don't eat on the go. Don't eat while you're driving. Make sure you pick nutritionally dense food and you're going to feel so much better coming in the 2017 year. Until next time, have a great day. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.